because as everything goes, uh, I've always thought October was one of my favorite months, but it's one of those things that you have to really concentrate on because it, October just flies by. I mean, it's already the 17th for tonight. Uh, we've got two weeks from tonight is the end of the month and the Halloween coming up. And that means that holiday music will be coming up right after that and right on in through Thanksgiving and the end of the year. We're not too far away from that. We're only about a month and a half away from the end of hurricane season for the year. So that's coming up on us. And we continue again to see uh, some decently quiet conditions. But October is one of those beautiful months to where you usually get a decent amount of uh, cooler weather coming through. It can be quite on the warm side. Hopefully everything gets a little bit cooler in the next couple of days. That would be really nice. But for right now, it's uh, going to continue to be fairly mild over the next several days. So enjoy what's left of October while you can. Two weeks from tonight, and that's it. It just seems like we got into this month not too long ago, right in the middle of the month somewhere in there. This is Weather Overtime. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onik. Coming up, we'll take a look at the bus stop forecast. We'll have your West Shore home weather window picture of the day. We've got a couple of days left until the great U.S. shakeout and shakeout around the world. Tropics, West Shore Home, Weather Window, I think I already said that. And peaking this weekend is the meteor shower coming up, the Orionids. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little while. So stay tuned. We've got a lot to talk about for this evening. When the angle of the sun and the clouds and the horizon and the air quality, everything just lines up really perfectly you get one of these spectacular pictures to where the sun is coming up over the horizon reflecting against the underside of the clouds and then a beautiful not too foggy view off in the distance so thank you patty nice i hope i'm nice longer i hope i'm saying that correctly with a name like onik you want to make certain that you are saying that as everybody else's name is as correctly as possible that's our west shore home weather window picture of the day sunrise on Dayton Mountain. And if you've got pictures, we'd love to see what you're seeing. Send them on to us at pictures at WDEF.com or drop them to our social media pages in the comments section. We'd love to see what you're seeing out there. For the rest of the day today, we were below normal once again. Normal for this time of the year is about the mid 70s. Uh, more potential of some colder conditions coming up in the next few months as the normal temperatures begin to drop into the mid 70s and lower 50s and everything else after that uh, starts to get rather on the chilly side into November and December. We are still, and this is kind of interesting to take a look at, we are still at an eight hundredths of an inch for the month of October. We're halfway through the month and September we managed to finish up one one hundredth over this amount making the third or fourth driest September since records were kept for Chattanooga. So we are now halfway through the month. We may pick up some more rain in the next couple of days. The big question is how much more are we going to be uh, getting that might help us improve this and tamp down the wildfire conditions. But for right now, we are seeing exceptionally dry weather, 8 hundredths of an inch, and that's it for Chattanooga. We are behind five and a third inches for the entire year. Sorry about that. I just realized that my microphones were not where they were supposed to be. Let me get that taken care of. You forget one thing over another doing this show, and unfortunately, you probably sounded like I was in an echo chamber there. Hopefully, you can hear me a little bit better at this point. We again see uh, the possibility for some rainfall in our near future, but just not really looking at too much heading our way anytime soon. We're not seeing any for tomorrow, that's for certain. So heading out on the golf course, no problems at all when it comes to uh, catching an 18-round practice out there. Uh, we don't see too much of any problems. The winds aren't even going to be that much of a breeze. Temperatures back in the lower 70s, so uh, very quiet for right now and looking good. Uh, if you're doing anything outdoors, anything with fire or flame, anything that could cause sparks, welding equipment, firing up the grill in the backyard, tossing that cigarette butt out the window, not a great idea these days. It's going to be great for outdoor activity, for catching a fish, looking good, excellent conditions there, but just please be cautious with anything involving fire because that could start a major 
wildfire very quickly and that is a life-threatening situation and we'll continue to see that throughout the next uh, couple of days as we see the drought situation has not improved at all the nearest update i believe is coming out wednesday or thursday and we're still in a severe drought situation for the entire area so i just don't see too much of any improvement uh, out there for now we did have quite a few let me see if i can find it back here real quick well let's take a look at smoke which is going to be from local wildfires before everything gets swept out of here by our next storm system coming through and then back over toward the mid-south area arkansas and missouri rice fields some more smoke heading down that direction that could wrap its way back up our direction uh, given the patterns we'll see what happens there this is a very stark graphic. This shows a lot of what we do not wish to see at this time of the year. Now, again, according to the forestry websites and taking a look at a lot of the data that gets plotted here, a lot of what you're seeing here about as much as one in five of these dots, especially here again in Arkansas and Missouri, that is where we see the potential for a lot of agriculture fires, burn off of uh, just waste from agriculture products, anything in the way of fallow fields being burned off and getting ready to go for the next year around so they can lie dormant. A lot of this is not though. Four fifths of this is probably new fires, spot fires being detected by satellite. And that's where we're winding up again with the problems here as we see uh, the potential for a lot less in the way of rainfall and a lot more in the way of wildfires. So please use caution with anything involving flame high pressure and control and we do have again some areas of a little bit of cloud cover left over that area of gray that you see there from the cumberland plateau back over to the appalachians that is just cloud cover sticking around but it is eroding and we should be seeing less of that as high pressure allows itself to work off toward the east next storm system on its way from the Rockies, and this will be dropping our direction into the next couple of days. A pretty potent storm system back off the West Coast area, most of the energy up in the Gulf of Alaska. We also have down here into around portions of the Pacific, Tropical Storm Norma, barely a tropical storm, but it's moving north over some very bathtub warm waters as it hits the southern tip of the Baja Peninsula. It's expected to take a right-hand turn, and it's possible we'll have to wait and see how this goes as this system might make its way over the mountainous parts of Mexico if it survives that shredding that the mountains will provide for that storm. If that survives, we could see this emerge into the Gulf and become an Atlantic named storm. We'll have to see what goes on with that. But again, for right now, it looks like it's going to Baja as a hurricane, uh, looking like it might turn back over Mexico, but that's still kind of iffy at this point. Our latest storm system here will be making its way across the country and digging its way back across the Great Lakes. Now, from what we've seen, into the next few days yes there will be chances of some showers and thunderstorms but as the available energy in the atmosphere kicks into gear by this time thursday night we see the pop-up chances of some more concentrated amounts of rainfall the heaviest activity will be with the main energy of this system going across the ohio river valley the upper mississippi and the great lakes that'll give us the potential of some areas of more thunderstorms more widespread activity up here it looks like thursday night into friday if this doesn't change too much that'll be the best potential of rainfall that we've got coming our direction and then for friday night football uh, outdoor activities into friday we could see the potential of some showers left over we'll show you that coming up here in just a little bit tomorrow morning brisk at the bus bus stop kids are going to need a more than a jacket probably a good coat with upper 30s to lower 40s briefly beautiful trip home for the kids lots of sunshine pleasant temperatures back in the lower 70s more clouds and that'll keep some of the daytime heat in overnight 40s and 50s there a few showers possible by dismissal time for the kids and drive time home but then we get into and around about news 12 at 11 on thursday and that is where we see that potential of more showers and thunderstorms coming up uh, just to our west and moving through 
there is no indication whatsoever that we're looking at <clears throat> excuse me anything in the way of severe weather so i really think that should hold for now but could be some wet roadways out there taking it forward a little bit more again overnight chances of showers redeveloping from that storm system and that could linger into and around uh, portions of friday morning which means the kids at the bus stop there will need some help with some rain but a couple days ago this was a lot more soggy from what we are seeing now for right now there is going to be the possibility of some scattered showers left over as it rotates around the back side of that area of low pressure but for right now at about dismissal time for the kids I think we're going to be clearing and getting into sunshine, so hopefully Friday night football and outdoor events for Friday night should be okay. Pleasant temperatures still way below normal for this time of the year, back in the upper 60s about the time the kids get out of school. Pleasant, drier, and hopefully that stays into uh, the weekend. We're still seeing less in the way of anything involving rainfall anytime soon. That gray area is right between not enough and way too much and that's what we'll be looking for for the next six to ten days from the climate prediction center so a better possibility of that and a little bit warmer not by much no heat wave that's to be certain but it is going to be a little bit warmer toward the mid-south and down toward the mississippi delta and then we see whatever's left over from those showers and thunderstorms cooling us off toward the end of the next week or so whether or not we drop on the temperatures after that storm system passes kind of have to wait and see now going long range into the next two weeks or so showers thunderstorms possible thursday into friday that's coming up in the next couple of days then we go forward just a little bit saturday friday night into saturday it looks like everything clears out so the meteor shower looks good we'll talk about that in just a little bit and then going way far in the future and again anything way out that direction take it with a grain of salt so this is what we're looking at again things change so much in the amount of time that we spend looking at these long-range forecasts to where certain conditions can change storms come up from the gulf storms storms come out of the north or off the ocean and the atlantic we have to really watch this with a lot of carefulness and to see this is a good suggestion of what might happen coming up by the last weekend of October. No guarantee at this time that it's going to stay that way. That's the way these things work. So by the time we get into the last weekend before Halloween, two weeks from tonight, this is where we could see some showers and thunderstorms returning. Uh, hopefully, again, that means clear skies for the ghosts and goblins because we all know how uncool it is to be Darth Vader who has to be carrying an umbrella that does not somehow light up like a lightsaber. So consider that. But for right now, I think we're looking good for Halloween. Hopefully it stays that way. We'll keep you updated on that in the next couple of weeks. This is the place for your Halloween forecast for tomorrow. Temperatures, again, not bad, just below normal, back in the lower 70s. Going toward the rest of the week, we see temperatures very mild. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Temperatures back into the upper 60s by Friday. Hopefully the shower and thunderstorm chances wrap up as we go into Friday night football. The weekend looks excellent. No problem at all. Mid to upper 60s to lower 70s. Lower to mid 70s toward the middle part of the second to last week of October. And looking very nice overall. Getting closer to normal on those, on those temperatures by the time we work our way into the uh, middle part of next week. And beyond that, still not seeing any major chances of rainfall, but by the time we work our way into around the area of Halloween, that'll be the next best chance. And it's not a great chance from what it looks like. So we could use a lot more rain than what we are going to be getting anytime soon. Really not a lot of good news out there uh, for the time that we have. So again, hopefully that changes in the near future how about the tropics any chance of anything helping us out there not much as of this time we've got another system over portions of the atlantic it does not look like much at this time it's just an area of investigation i believe this is invest 94 and the generic idea behind this is once again we may be looking at this system uh, going toward the west northwest maybe affecting the leeward islands maybe as far over as uh, puerto rico 
but then it looks like according to some of the uh, spaghetti models we're looking at a sharp right turn back up into somewhere around the mid-atlantic so this also does not for now appear to be a threat to anything around the united states and therefore no help for us what we could use is a leftover tropical system that doesn't have the punch of a full hurricane not even a tropical storm some of these storms can last for days or even weeks afterwards and if we could get one of those to kind of park itself over our area and give us a nice stretched out amount of precipitation that would be just what we would be looking for so for right now i really don't see any help from this particular system uh, coming on through for the time being two days to go until the great shakeout that's coming up on thursday your opportunity to practice what goes on in the world's largest earthquake drill other places are having examples about what they're planning to do to raise awareness to get people to practice to just think about disaster prep and why it's necessary to raise the issue and think about it it's not about inducing panic it's about making certain everybody is better prepared for what may happen and this is one of the best things you can do so two days until the great u.s shakeout or just the great shakeout more information about what other groups are doing that you might want to pick and choose and help your group to promote what's going on go to shakeout.org for more information for astronomical purposes this is getting close to the orionid meteor shower technically one of the bigger uh, showers of the year this is going to be your opportunity to make certain that you uh, introduce your kids to a little bit of more astronomy orion one of the most recognizable constellations in the sky for fall and winter with that belt of three stars what you want to be looking for is again uh, you want to be looking toward the area of the red star in orion's uh, left shoulder technically it's his right shoulder but the left shoulder that red star is Betelgeuse. Look toward that bright red star. The blue star near his foot is Rigel. This right here back toward Gemini, the constellation of the twins, and Taurus the bull with Aldebaran, the bright red star there. Look in that general area of Orion from his shoulder where Betelgeuse is, and that's where you will see the Orionid meteor shower Friday night into Saturday. Hopefully things clear out by just a little bit. Uh, going to be seeing some leftover clouds from that departing storm system, but we're hoping to keep the skies as clear as we possibly can for that. But we'll see how well things clear out into the next couple of days. We're not looking at a great amount of meteors. 20 meteors per hour, that's about one every three minutes. Now that sounds, again, decently uh, mild, but we do see, again, some meteor showers like the Perseids and also uh, many other showers through the years uh, can be a lot stronger than this one. So this is not going to be one of the best ones, and the meteor rate expected to be, again, about 20, so that's not bad. The moon is expected to be at about a third of the way full, so hopefully not a problem for that. Uh, that'll be going toward from new to full, so it'll be a waxing gibbous moon that'll be rising later on but look in the southeast east southeast for the constellation of orion to rise and then look in that general area for those meteors to flare outwards from that location and you'll be able to see that nice clear sky dark skies well away from city lights because that sky shine out there can be a bit of a problem so please keep that in mind uh, if you're going to be doing any meteor spotting out there. So please give this a shot. Go out and relax. Go take a lawn chair so you're not craning your neck upwards all the time. And that'll be nice and relaxed. Get some blankets, get some hot cocoa, and be prepared for a beautiful show, hopefully, what we see coming up here uh, into the course of the next several days. This got a little bit of some clap back from a couple of people last week when i was talking about the oceans but this is so important to be talking about and now is something that we all need to be joining into so mr rc from cleveland uh you mentioned about the fact that i was full of hot air and that uh electrical vehicles cause more pollution than fossil fuels well mr rc of cleveland and you know who you are because you made a very public statement i'm not doxing anybody but i am making certain that uh, Mr. R.C. knows that I, I saw his comments 
when you are able to publish something like that and say electric vehicles cause more pollution than uh, fossil fuel powered vehicles do, you can say that if you want to. This is a country that guarantees you the right to say anything, you, almost anything you want to. It is not a country that guarantees that everything you say is correct. Yes, that means me too, but that also means that I back up what I say coming direct from these websites from scientists and researchers and reporters and journalists and specialists who know about this stuff. So, Mr. R.C. from Cleveland, electric vehicles cause more pollution than fossil fueled vehicles. Go ahead and say it. Now it's your turn. Prove it. Give me an idea. Give me some websites that I can check that back up your claim and then I can do a rebuttal on that. That's the way science works. But for right now, it's no good peddling your bourgeois that says, in your opinion, this is what is going on. This is not my opinion. None of which I present on climate change and how we're harming our planet is my opinion. All of this is backed up by research, observation, and fact. When you show me, can, when you can prove from a university study, five university studies, 52 university studies that show that electric vehicles are worse for the environment than fossil fuels, that's great. You didn't show anything. You showed nothing. So if you would like to make certain that you are able to show that, please go ahead and post the information. Let me know where your sources lie, and then we'll examine them, and we'll see who is the more correct on this. But I post everything out there for everybody to see. All you posted was your opinion. So if you've got the opinion, go ahead and back it up. But for right now, I say that what you're peddling is a bunch of tripe, and you need to defend your argument that EVs are worse than regular fossil fuel cars. And to answer your question, no, I don't drive a horse. I drive a gasoline-powered vehicle. You don't know how I care for the environment, and you don't know what my carbon footprint is. And to be completely and totally honest, how dare you sit there and blame me for a lot of the problems out there instead of offering solutions and ideas like I do. You can sit there and say, I'm part of the problem. Let's take a look at your carbon footprint. How much do you drive per week? How many gallons of gas do you burn? What is the amount of trash you throw away? What do you recycle? And you can throw all that in my face and say, I don't care. It doesn't matter. When you start making comments like you did on my page, it becomes my problem. So if you want to say stuff like that, go ahead. But put your money where your mouth is and say where I'm wrong. Don't just give me some out of left field opinion. And that really, again, is something to think about uh, when you're on that side of the fence. Climate change denialism is kind of like flat eartherism or flurferism these days. You can't show me where the edge of the earth is because it doesn't exist. It's not possible to show me where the edge of the planet is. If it is, show me. I would love to buy property at the edge of the planet. Think of the views. Think how easy it is to, would be to get rid of garbage, just throw it off the planet and straight off the edge into space. There is no edge of the planet. The earth is not flat. Likewise, we are causing problems for the planet by what we're doing. Yes, I'm part of that problem, but I'm helping to reduce that by my practices and putting all of this into motion. So something to think about, Mr. RC, when you get the opportunity, stop by uh, online and email me the information and I'll post it and I'll give you and I'll, we'll let the public decide on what to look for. But you may want to kind of refine the way you throw about your accusations just to be on the safe side there because that would not work in any laboratory across the entire planet uh, without backing it up with proof. Speaking of which, Here's proof for tonight about what we're looking at from sciencealert.com. We've taken a look at what damage we're doing to the atmosphere. We're taking a look at what damage we are doing to the hydrosphere. There's another sphere that we are doing damage to with our human-induced climate change, and Science Alert takes a look at that about what we're doing to the heat that's being absorbed by the earth, the dirt, the soil, the rock itself something to really think about there and something that a lot of people haven't thought about. A carbon sink is where carbon dioxide gets put into the ground. Trees are carbon sinks. Some parts of deserts, swamps, bogs can be carbon sinks. The Amazon rainforest was a carbon sink. Now it's a carbon emitter. 
and that's causing a lot more damage to our planet because the lungs of our planet are being damaged. So if you'd like to know more about going from carbon sinks to carbon sources, especially in Arctic, links, uh, Arctic lakes, Yale Climate Change, Yale University, talks about that in their Climate Change E360 program. Really great one to keep track of there. And f climate change threatening butterflies. It doesn't sound like much, but if it affects the lower parts of the food web, what does that do to the higher parts of the food web? The rainforestsite.com is a great place to go to for checking in with information. It's also a really cool place to go to to click a button. You view a few ads that pop up on your screen, and then those sponsors of those ads pay to set aside, they purchase rainforest space in the name of the rainforest site that will never be developed for farmland or slash and burn for development into parts of our planet that do not need to be developed. So something to think about on that. If you'd like to know more about that, go to the rainforestsite.com if you'd like to learn, <clears throat> excuse me, a little bit more on that. Sorry for the soap, well, no, I'm not sorry for the soapbox because this is something we all need to be talking about. And we all need to make certain our politicians, our legislators know how important this is. We all need to take part in talking up this problem of the environment and about what we're doing to it to our church groups, our place of worship, our friends, our family, our schoolmates. Anybody who's in charge of making laws needs to be aware of this. And if they are unaware of it or unwilling to be aware of it, they need to consider why they're in public office in the first place. That's not good news for the people who are putting people like that into office who don't care about the environment enough to be that involved. We are causing damage to our planet. We need to stop it, and we all can do it if we work together. More information on all this, head to my social media pages. Would love to hear from you on that. And again, if you've got something to say about how wrong I am about my forecast, about weather information coming in and going out, about climate change, about what we can do to save the planet, great. Let me know politely and cite your sources. If you can't do that, don't make the claims in the first place because it doesn't make you look good and it's not a good practice to say, well, this is what I think and I'm right just because. That's not the way science works. So if you want to be part of the, of the solution and you want to tell me that I'm doing something wrong, fine. I'm grown up enough to take that. But do something with, you put your weight behind it and say, this is why you're wrong. Here's the proof on all of this. And we'll review that and we'll send it out to everybody watching this so that we can talk a little bit more about that as we go along in the next several days and weeks. Thinking about putting together another podcast like this uh, regarding your environment. So we'll see how well that goes. Uh, in the semi-near future on that. Wait a minute, one more thing here before we leave. Uh, the Greater Chattanooga Orthodontics bus stop forecast for tomorrow. Mid-40s, partly excuse me, cloudy in the morning, and then going for the mid to upper 60s to lower 70s by the time the kids are out. Remember, that's a real stop sign on the side of the bus, so let's make certain that everybody has slowed down, pulled over, and is paying attention in those school zones, anywhere in neighborhoods, and anywhere around schools. That'll do it for tonight. I think that's enough. Been on the soapbox enough for one evening at least. I'm Chief Meteorologist Austin Onick from News 12 in downtown Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, USA. For those of you tuning in elsewhere, I'm on all these social media networks, so look me up there. Chip Chapman has your forecast bright and early at 5 a.m. Wednesday morning. And, of course, I'll be keeping track of those thunderstorms coming on through as we go through the next couple of days, Thursday and Friday. So stay tuned for more on that. Keep an eye on what's going on at WDEF.com slash weather. And thanks for joining us for Tuesday night's Weather Overtime.